Welcome back guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about the elephant in the room, or shall I say whale in the room. Haha. <laughs> Deep Sea one beating out OpenAI's O1 Pro in not only coding benchmarks, but also smashing it out of the park when it comes to the cost benchmarks, which we're going to get to in a second. And so in this video, we are going to show you how to actually utilize DeepSeek R1 with N8N automation. So an AI automation using an N8N integration. And then we're going to put it to the test with an actual use case. So definitely stick around uh, to that because it was actually kind of interesting and actually kind of surprising to me personally. There are some of my own workflows that I am for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt going to replace with, uh, with DeepSeek in my own workflows. So we will be getting toward to that at the end or toward the end of, the, of this video. So what I'm going to hop into right now is just breaking down what it is exactly that we are, uh, that we are looking at when it comes to DeepSeek's reasoning capabilities. So as you can see in this, tweet that was tweeted by DeepSeek or X'd, shall I say, this X post that was tweeted by DeepSeek. We can see uh, when it comes to certain uh, coding parameters or coding uh, tests, I guess you'd call them, it's neck and neck with OpenAI's O1 Pro and then it actually beats it out in certain other metrics um, such as like math reasoning uh, tests. Uh, but the thing that's pretty crazy if you really think about it, is the cost of these. So what we're looking at here, the input cost for a million tokens with DeepSeek R1, cents, so 55 cents, with the output, or comparing that to the output token of ChatGPT's O1 Pro at $15, uh, that's already a huge, huge difference. And then the output token cost per million tokens for DeepSeek, again, uh, $2.19 compared with ChatGPT's O1 Pro at about $60 per million token output. So the, the cost difference here is really astronomical. Um, so if we were to pop back real quick and even just look at this, it's like, okay, maybe O1 Pro is marginally beating out DeepSeek, but at what cost? I think for most use cases that people are going to have, the cost benefit alone of DeepSeek just is blowing it out of the water right now. And again, we're going to get to that in a second. Now, there's two things here. Uh, the first one is that you can just go in and play around with it yourself. So if you don't want to do a whole AI, N8N integration, automation thing, or run it locally, which we do go through in an upcoming video how to actually run this locally, you can just come in and chat with it. So if you go to chat.deepseek.com, you can come in here and you can just message DeepSeek directly. Pretty cool. One of the things that's really interesting is just seeing how it reasons through problems, um, which is actually a little bit different from how it seems to do it with the OpenAI's O1, O1 Pro. If you're the type of person that wants to dive into the research of it all, there's a research paper published by DeepSeek that really goes into the R1 model in depth. That is actually where this performance benchmark that we were looking at on the X platform came from, came from this research paper. So you can obviously go through there and check that all out. So that being said, I like to test these things out with a chat node as my trigger. So I'm gonna say on chat message, okay? And then we're gonna come through here and we are going to create our AI agent like so okay now we need to connect it to a basic memory like a window buffer memory is fine for this use case and if we want to now uh connect deep seek in here we need to understand something uh fairly straightforward about how we're able to use deep seek because what you'll notice inside of n8n if you've tried to do this before there is no language model that you can use for deep seek does not exist if you were going to run this thing locally on your computer, which again, we get to in another video, you could run it through the Olama chat model. But if we're talking about trying to interact with it via its cloud API, that is not possible to do with a pre-configured node. So we have to understand a little bit about how it actually works in order to do this. And so if we go over and look at the API docs for DeepSeek, uh, you're going to notice a few things. 
Uh, first, basic endpoint URLs and stuff for making making requests. But what I want to really pull your attention to, uh, especially if you're a beginner and you're not aware of how this stuff works, is that DeepSeek has uses OpenAI basically as a a wrapper. So what this means is that you can actually make a request in N8N to the OpenAI node, but have the request flow through to DeepSeek. To use DeepSeek V3 or DeepSeek R1 or any other model that they come out with in the future, you can just make the request directly to OpenAI, but then pass your DeepSeek values in there. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Uh, so the first thing that you need is you need to go over to DeepSeek and you need to create a API key. Come in here, uh, top it up, sign up for an account. So go to platform.deepseek.com, log in, and then top up a balance, put a credit card in there. I put $2 in here. You don't need to do anything too crazy. And then come down to API keys, create your API key, and then copy what you have there. So once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to pop on over to N8N and I'm going to show you how to configure this thing. So first thing you want to do is click on chat model, open AI chat model. And then where it has your open AI credentials up here, we're going to want to uh, come through, create a new credential. Okay. And so the API key here, you want to put in what that N8N API key is that you have. So if I were to go back again to the platform and just create a new API key for this video, and it in YouTube video, I'm going to delete this. So don't try to copy it. You come back over to here and you just put that API key in and then you save. Now, the thing that I'm going to point out to you is this is going to actually show that it failed because it's trying to connect right now to open AI. It's not trying to connect to deep seek. So it's going to tell you that it failed, which is fine for now. So what we want to do is we want to go back to this open AI chat model and where it says add option base URL. We have this api.openai.com slash v1. What we want to do is go back to our API docs for DeepSeek. And we want to copy this URL right here, api.deepseek.com. Copy that and put that in right here. Now, the thing you want to keep in mind is that you do need to have this v1 appended to the back of it. Um, even though this, for all intents and purposes, doesn't really get used in the DeepSeek request, it needs to be there for it to follow the format. And again, remember the reason that we're doing this is DeepSeek is using the OpenAI wrapper. So we need to make the request as if we were making the request to OpenAI. That is how this whole thing works. So we put that in there. Now, the last thing is the model, okay? So obviously we're not authenticated properly into OpenAI. So if we hit this drop down, it's not gonna show us a model. And so what we need to do is we need to click on expression and we need to actually type in the name of the DeepSeek model. And so if we go back to, to DeepSeek, we can see there's two options for us. So we have DeepSeek chat. DeepSeek chat is going to give us access to DeepSeek V3, if you wanted to use DeepSeek V3. And then we have DeepSeek reasoner, which is what's going to give us access to R1. Okay. And so if we go back now into N8N, we just want to type in DeepSeek reasoner. And now if we wanted to test if this thing is actually working or not, we can go into our chat, refresh that, and we can say, um, what is the speed of light? Hit enter, it's gonna go out, and now we can see where it is processing down here, that request. Now, the thing that we actually forgot to do, just for sake of not confusing yourself, is that you wanna rename this, because it's gonna have open AI's uh, logo on it. You want to rename this to something like DeepSeek rename. And then we can hop back over here and we can see that it did run through. So it successfully went out, hit the DeepSeek API and returned us this, this answer to this question that we were asking it. Now, like I alluded to in the beginning of the video, what we really want to look at is how do all of these different models actually perform against each other? If we were to take the same prompt and feed it into DeepSeek versus O1 Pro versus Claude, what does the difference in the output actually look like? And so what I'm going to go through right now is a marketing research 
example, and this isn't gonna be like a, a stupid marketing research thing that's not practical. This is gonna be actually doing advertising search for any business that you might have or any use case that you might have. And so we're gonna pop over to here where I have a prompt already made for people that uh, don't know what Eugene, who Eugene Swartz is. Uh, he's like the, I guess you'd call him the godfather of modern marketing. And he has this way of breaking down your avatar into their stages of awareness, right? Unaware being person doesn't even know they have the problem that you offer a solution to. Most aware being they are intimately aware of the problem, your product, all of the other products out there and what they do, the claims they make, all that type of stuff, right? And so buyers exist on a spectrum from unaware to problem aware to solution aware and so on. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to give it this avatar research document and we are going to see how the responses differ from each model. So if we come in here and we paste the prompt in, it's gonna go out and it is going to run this through DeepSeek and return us our response. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna run this through each of the models. Okay, so we have run this now through each of the models that we have. So we ran it through DeepSeek, we ran it through OpenAI um, 01, and we ran this through the Anthropic um, Sonnet as well. And so what I did is I dumped the response to this for each one inside of a Word doc so we can actually look at the outputs that we got. And so a little bit of marketing theory background, we wanna look at who is this person and why do they make the types of decisions that they make in life. And so the example from this prompt was, we wanted to build an avatar for an AI uh, voice assisted note taking device that is $9 per month, right? So we said, hey, this is the type of product that we're selling to target men between age 25 and 40 that wanna improve you know, these aspects of their life with this device, and this is the price, go out and build all of this. So build me their demographic information, their psychographic information, and answer all of these other uh, questions that we have down here as well. And so let's see what it came back with. So DeepSeek R1, when we talk about some of the psychographics of this person, main personality traits, DeepSeek tells us that they are analytical, but overwhelmed by clutter. They're pragmatic, but impatient with inefficiency. They're curious about tech, but skepti skeptical of hype. So if we were to go look now at Claude, tells us they're amb ambitious and driven, analytical and logical, curious and always learning, perfectionist tendencies, introverted, but values meaningful connections. And then if we go over to chat, GPT, it says they're curious, ambitious, slightly overwhelmed, analytical, and socially engaged. Now, if we were to actually look at all of these and you wanted to like put together marketing material as an example, the output from DeepSeek is, is clearly uh, better than the other outputs because it's giving us the, like, the painful side of those personality traits, which is something that we're gonna be able to use in our marketing material, right? So they're curious about tech, sure, but they're skeptical of the hype. So if I'm gonna put together a piece of marketing material um, this is something that I think would be really good to call out, right? The skepticism that this person has. And so as we continue through the other outputs that we've gotten, major values they hold, they really care about efficiency. They really view time as their scarcest resource. They're, if they're not, they feel that if they're not growing, they're stagnating. Uh, they hustle hard, but they really appreciate their downtime. They want systems that adopt to, them. they don't want to adopt to the systems right? So we can go through and through and through. Then we get to the Dan Kennedy smart market questions. What are they secretly afraid of? What are they angry about? Tools that promise efficiency, but add steps to your overall workflows. Um, this one speaks to me a lot, for example, in trying to use different AI tools. And some of them are meant to be these really efficient tools, but at the end of the day, they actually kind of suck. And so if we go to Claude and look at what does Claude say that this person is angry about, it's entirely different, right? Claude says this person is angry about, they're frustrated with themselves, not being able to manage their time and their ideas effectively. They're annoyed at the constant stream of distractions in their work environment. It's like, okay, anno being annoyed at the constant stream of distractions in their work environment may be true, but it really has nothing to do with an AI note-taking app, 
voice note taking app. It doesn't really impact that very much. If we were to go look at what uh, ChatGPT's O1, uh, what are they angry about? Uh, frustrated with himself over not having a strong grasp on his own ideas. Sometimes gets annoyed with the flood of everyday distractions like notifications, tasks, meeting invites. This derails his train of thought and buries good ideas before he can act on them. So this one is already better. I would say uh, DeepSeek and Chat GPT had a much better, a much better output than uh, than Claude did. Now the difference is that if we're thinking of like DeepSeek R1 versus Claude or Chat GPT versus Claude, Claude is going to do much better at a creative writing style of exercise. So typically when we're doing this specific market research exercise, the next stage of this is to write a diary entry from the perspective of the prospect. And that is something that Claude would probably outperform both of these on because it's better at that type of creative writing. So that is it for this video. If there are other videos that you would like to see, if you want to see maybe um, more stuff on DeepSeek, maybe things on Cursor AI, um, other models that you'd like to see tested, local versions of any of this type of stuff, uh, let me know in the comments and I will uh, potentially use that for my next videos. So that being said, I'll see you in the next one.